Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, and welcome to the press. Welcome by extension to everybody who's listening to this uh, live podcast. Um, like has been mentioned, uh, there was a pronouncement today on the floor of the House, and this pronouncement was triggered by the point of order that was raised by the Minister of Home Affairs last week on Friday. Uh, that point of order was raised after the Constitutional Court on Thursday delivered a ruling in a matter where the nine members of Parliament of the Patriotic Front who had purportedly been expelled had challenged the decision to expel them before the Constitutional Court. The Constitution made a pronouncement on Thursday where they said that because the matter did not raise constitutional matters, the Republican Constitution, they were not seized with jurisdiction to hear that matter. In that ruling, they guided the parties and said, in furtherance of intra-party democracy, the Patriotic Front must endeavor to resolve their matters internally um, going forward. The litigants who were before the courts of law and the party who had been sued, in that case, Honorable Mayor Sampa, engaged into some deliberations that resulted in Mr. Sampa communicating a position to National Assembly saying that he had rescinded his decision or he had reversed his decision to expel the nine members of parliament. In fact, that communication arrived at parliament before 7.30 on Friday, so that when the house was sitting, and we start sitting at nine hours on Friday, the point of order that was raised uh, procedurally had been overtaken by the fact that the National Assembly had received communication. The ruling was reserved by the Speaker on the point of order by Honorable Muitwa. When Parliament resumed sitting today, after, after the long weekend, uh, there was an order paper that was circulated. On that order paper, there was no indication whether the ruling on that point of order was going to be rendered today. During the, progress, the, the process of the proceedings of Parliament, uh, the Deputy Speaker, second Deputy Speaker, rose without uh, an agenda item on the order paper to deliver a ruling in which he purported that the expulsions that had been pronounced by Mr. Sampa against the nine remain valid and on that account he ordered that they should vacate their seats and that their, 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 their constituency officers become vacant. He cited Article 75 of the Constitution. He also deliberated that uh, he had received communication from Mr. Sampa, rescinding or reversing the decisions to expel the nine members of parliament. But he argued that in accordance with the tradition of the National Assembly, I don't know what tradition the speaker was talking about, because this speaker only entered into the seat of the speaker at the beginning of this parliament in 2021. But he cited some tradition that he says insofar as his office is concerned, Communication from a political party is made through the Office of Secretary General, and therefore he decided to comply with the communication which he received from Mr. Muna and dispensed with the communication that was received from Honorable Mao Samba uh, in, in, in stating the position of these expelled members of parliament who, whose expulsion was reversed. Now, there was one thing that the speaker also ignored. Uh, on Thursday, when the Concord guided and said it was not seized with jurisdiction to hear the matter, the affected members of parliament, in compliance with the law, filed fresh proceedings before the court of law. Now, as the nation is aware, 
when the court is seized with a matter involving the incumbency of members of parliament, National Assembly, by practice and by law, does not enter into that fray. You always allow the court to finish the deliberations of the matters before it can be pronounced. In fact, that position was communicated to the National Assembly and acknowledged that there are fresh proceedings where the expulsion was still being challenged by the affected members of parliament. The Speaker of the National Assembly today was reminded that actually this communication is sitting in his office or in the office of a clerk so that parliament has been formally notified of these proceedings. In making this controversial ruling, the Speaker again ignored uh, the fact that there are proceedings before the court and this office cannot deal with the matter involving those members of parliament, completely ignoring it. The Speaker also ignored a cherished principle that was pronounced even by the first the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Madam Nelly Muti, on the occasion of when Honorable Stotela, on the 23rd of November 2023, raised a point on the floor of the House saying that the Patriotic Front had at that time expelled Honorable Mao Sampa and that he was wondering why Mao Sampa was sitting in his seat of member of parliament when actually he had been expelled. The Speaker of the National Assembly, citing existing precedents, made a pronouncement that she could not deal with the matter involving Honorable Mao Sampa because the matter was before the courts of law, i.e. the Speaker cannot deliberate on any matter if there was notification that the matter is before the courts of law. For, unfortunately today, the speaker who was making a pronouncement did not find it fit to be constrained by the fact that there's a, there are court proceedings at the instigation of these nine members of parliament. You know, and the other thing that was also ignored is the fact that under the current constitutional dispensation, under Article 75, that the speaker was citing, the Speaker of National Assembly has no mandate under the Constitution to declare a seat for a member of parliament vacant. Because in the constitutional setting that we have in this country, it's only the constitutional court which has a final jurisdiction after hearing the matter on its merits to pronounce that the expulsion of a member of parliament was valid or invalid. And if it was valid, the consequences will fall. The Speaker only receive notification from court once the matter is completed. And the responsibility of the speaker after that is to notify the ECZ of the existence of the vacancy. This was pronounced in the case of Kambuili versus the Attorney General, when Dr. Patrick Matibini was speaker, when he purported to have expelled Honorable Kambuili from parliament. Mr. Kambuili challenged that matter, it was before the courts of law, and the constitutional court gave guidance on the role of the speaker under Constitutional Amendment Act Number 2 of 2016, where they said the responsibility of the Speaker in the current constitutional setting is merely that of a referee. You are only an arbiter. So what we have done as the Patriotic Front, the affected members of the party, and Secretary General, I think, is going to expand on that position, is that we have sought legal counsel, and we are taking yet another legal challenge of this matter before the courts of law. Now, it pains me to sit here and begin to suggest that we're actually going to court. Why? Because it is now beginning to become very clear that these institutions of governance in this country have been so polarized by the Republican president and by extension, by the UPND as a party in government. I think the, gov the, the public is aware of the recent developments before the courts of law where clear-cut cases where they should have dealt with the matters on the merits have been thrown away on some kind of technicality, one type of technicality or another. This constitution under which we pride ourselves as a constitutional democracy has a specific provision that demands that at all times the court must not be bogged down by technicalities, but must ensure that it addresses itself to merits of the case that comes before it, as well as ensure that you know, justice is rendered in accordance with the expectations of the constitution. So even as we return back to our lawyers with instructions that we go back to court, we have a painful presumption that this time we are going to find courts that are prepared to preserve and underscore or protect the constitution of this republic. The only thing that keeps this country intact together is the constitution. The constitution has provisions that ensures that every Zambian 
has a stake in the governance of the nation. It does not allow rule by the might, as we are seeing currently. I had made an earlier call, and I can only repeat it here. I would like to call on Zambians from all walks of life to begin to take a keen interest in how the UPND is governing this nation. For the longest time in this country, we have been thinking that the UPND has got the moral right to punish the patriotic front and possibly to throw them out of existence. This is not a matter for the patriotic front versus the UPND. This is a matter for our survival as a sovereign state of the Republic of Zambia. I want to call upon traditional leaders, wherever they are. I want to call upon the church, wherever they are. I want to call upon professional organizations, wherever they are. I want to call upon civil society organizations, wherever they are. And most importantly, I want to call upon the profession to which I pride myself to belong, the Law Association of Zambia, to take a very keen interest in these matters as they unfold. The Constitution is being ripped. The Constitution is being breached. There seems to be a concert party, a concert rather, between the government in power, the executive, and the National Assembly, and unfortunately, by extension, sections of the judiciary that are not prepared to have a constitution that should guide how we conduct our affairs in the nation. Yes, this might be a fight for the patriotic front alone, but I can assure you, once this government is finished with the patriotic front, they will look for another victim. That's how dictatorships or oligarchies are entrenched. We are a sovereign constitutional democracy. Our journey to democracy started in 1991. It was reinforced in 2016 when we made it a constitutional democracy. We must all aspire to ensure that the constitution is respected. I had said earlier that in fact Zambians are very accommodating people. In another country, what happened today in parliament, that parliament tomorrow was not going to open. The people were going to seize the power which they have under the constitution and ensure that they are the ones in the forefront to fight to restore constitutional order in the country. You should think about those people in Mporokoso constituency, those people in Shiwangandu constituency, those people in Lunte and Kawambwa and Pambashe, and elsewhere where the MP, with a stroke of a second deputy speaker, has been removed from office. What is going to happen to those who repose their confidence and power and trust in these members of parliament that tomorrow we must have another by-election? It's costly, it's unnecessary, but most importantly, it is being done against the backdrop of breaching the constitution. This is a fight that every Zambian must take an interest in to restore constitutional order. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. As you've heard, as I hand over to West Jim, matters were already filed in court. I think we have documents to show you where we filed on 27th. So there was no need for the second deputy speaker to proceed with his pronouncements when he had record and the um, National Assembly had received a copy of the Constitutional Court uh, to show process was before court. But they ignored all that and proceeded. So the illegality is very clear. The disregard for the Constitution, the disregard for, uh, for uh, matters in the Constitutional Court with impunity is very clear. SG, please uh, address the nation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, uh, MCC, Honorable Silvia Cherkosa, uh, MCC and Chair Foligo, uh, Honorable uh, George Sanga. Mine is to first of all address the Zambian people and by extension address the members of Patriotic Front across the nation. Patriotic Front is uh, privileged once more to play a role in Zambia to fight for the restoration of democracy in the Republic of Zambia, which is not only under threat, but clearly by the developments of today, Ms. Aka Indechirema has decided to be an agent to destroy democracy in the Republic of Zambia. 
Zambia has remained, you know, a torchbearer, a pioneer on many fronts. A pioneer historically as one that um, spearheaded the liberation struggle, not only for the region, but the entire continent. Towards the late 1980s, Zambia once more showed its um, not only leadership, but also privileged position of being ahead of nations within the region to pioneer the reintroduction of multi-party democracy in the region. Unfortunately, over 30 years down the line, we are unfortunate to have a puppet of foreign interest, a dictator, one that has no shame and conscience, taking steps that are clear to all of us to see towards not only destroying our democracy, but destroying all principles, values, and ethics that we have held dear as a country to ensure that, first of all, we are united, two, our governance systems are protected, three, when it comes to the rule of law, it is no compromise. Whether it was under Kaunda, whether it was under Dr. Chiluba, whether it was under Mwanawasa, whether it was under Rupia Banda, Michael Sata, or indeed Edgar Chagwalungu, we may have played politics, but when it comes to the rule, when it came to the rule of law and acknowledging and protecting institutions of governance, it was never, never, never a compromise. Today, members of Patriotic Front. I want to appeal to you, instead of having to be depressed, to be dejected, to be discouraged, rise up and consider what is happening as a great, great call upon all of us to do something for our country. The Zambian people, wherever you are, now you can see clearly that this is not just mere politicking. Misaka in the HRM has a clear agenda against our democracy. He has a clear agenda against the institutions of governance. What has transpired in Patriotic Front, the whole scheme and project from the inception up to today, it has exposed the UPND and Misaka and HRM. It has, by extension, exposed the judiciary. It has exposed parliament. As Patriotic Front, we are wondering how are Zambians going to go to bed tonight? Are we going to go to bed with a clear conscience? and really find sleep with what is happening. Today we can be having Zambians, regardless of their political affiliation, accept some even praise and celebrate the conduct of the likes of charlatans like Robert Chaving, and even tolerate them to exist in our society where all of us regardless of our political affiliation, aspire to have our democracy not only grow but flourish to a point where it doesn't matter who comes into government, which political party comes into government. Systems of government should be constant and be able to deliver to the aspiration of the German people. Our brother Mao Sampa, all of us have been watching, observing, and 
persuading ourselves that he could be correcting himself, that what he participated in was uh, something that is uncalled for. And that realization must be commended by every well-meaning Zambian. But as it were, those who were behind all that illegality and what has transpired have shown their ugly head once more in wanting to sponsor another faction within a faction. The Robert Chabinga scheme was known two, three weeks ago that Misaka in the was not satisfied the fact that even with all his attempts, he has actually been exposed. And he still wants to, wants to proceed to continuously expose himself. And in his desperation to cover himself, even having exposed himself, he's doing further damage to our democracy. In trying to destroy PF, then we are allowing this man to destroy our democracy. <coughs> In 2016, the Zambian people, through the elected representatives of parliament, did express themselves that they didn't want by-elections. Hence, the provisions of the constitution today. It is so tedious that you can never have a by-election just at a whim or indeed reckless decisions of a political party. Where still, when it comes from a sponsored group, as it has now manifested in Parliament today? This chair has already expressed. Parliament has no right to declare any seat vacant, except on two conditions. One is that when a member of Parliament, for example, is purported to be expelled, they must accept that expulsion. All the nine members of parliament have rejected the purported expulsion as expressed through the uh, you know, uh, process to go to court to challenge that those purported expulsions. Not only at the first instance, even after the constitutional court suggested that they didn't have jurisdiction to deal with the matters that were raised before it. Actions were taken by Friday. Today, Parliament should not have closed itself with powers that it doesn't have in relation to the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia. But what has happened? We know the meetings that have been held in, behind the scenes, where even the one who was pronouncing Moyo, first of all, we all know, Zambians know that that guy is not even <coughs> fit to sit where he's seated. He doesn't have even 10% of the knowledge and competence to be able to you know, execute the duty or responsibilities placed over his shoulders. The ruling just exposes the lack of knowledge. To come and say that we are, expelling, we are declaring uh, the seats of nine members of parliament vacant because the one who has written a letter is not the secretary general. How has Parliament invited itself to be concerned about the internal affairs of political parties and its constitution? <clears throat> Just a few days ago, the Constitutional Court made a ruling that the job of the Speaker is to re receive correspondence from a political party and act on that correspondence and never invite itself into the internal affairs of a political party. Today, Madam Neri and the Misaka in the Islema are exposed. The double standard has been exposed. I'm seated here, Secretary General. We wrote letters way before any action was undertaken by our colleagues that held that illegal 24th of October conference, Exp you know, disciplining them, expelling them. This speaker of today, Nelly Muti, with the Kahoots, ignored that correspondence. 
and decided to conveniently wait for other processes by the executive so that they can be able to legitimatize what was illegal. As it were, when you play double standard, it's a matter of time you'll be exposed. Today, Mr. Aka in the HDMI's scheme to destroy our democracy has been exposed. Here, the expulsion of or the declaration of uh, the nine seats vacant exposes Mr. Aka in the HDMI. He is actually standing wherever he is, pants down. Radana Masampuga. John says, when people connect from your pronouncement in Kasama, when it says you have to be strong, and all the shenanigans that have been going on, it has only gone to embarrass you as a person and as a president. And with police and escort Today, <coughs> Chabinga was having a press briefing, not today, this night, was having a press briefing under uh, police protection. A battalion of police, more than 50 police officers have been deployed to protect this young boy. Just for purposes of being a tool in the hands of Mr. Aka in the Ichilema to advance his agenda. Now, you have proven, Mr. Aka in the Ichilema, that you are not a politician. Because if you were a politician who had given just 10% of Kaunda, even just 5% of Chiruva, even just 2% of Michael Sato, you realize that you are digging your own grave by the actions that you are taking. And we want to salute you. Continue. You may inconvenience individuals, but your, the votes in the hands of the many million Zambians are already tilting and gravitating towards the opposition. For Patriotic Front, this is the time for us to proudly so take up our arsenals, political arsenals, and engage in defending our democracy and defending our party. We salute our brother, Mao Sampa, for his uh, realization and we only hope that during this whole process, he will continue to have the courage to go through and do the right thing. I think for every human being, when you have made a mistake and you decide to realize that there is a way in which I can restitute and you gather the courage to restitute, you are greater than those who may be you know, condemning you or suggesting anything else for you. You have an opportunity out of this courage you have exhibited to restitute, to go through and be able to become a hero out of what seemed to have been something that would have destroyed you. Continue to be courageous. We will stand with you and we will stand with the Zambian people and Patriotic Front, wherever you are, don't worry. Everything is in order. Aluta Continua, this man called Misaka in Dechrema has dug his grave and you fall in it. All we need to do is to help him to fall in it and to bury him ceremoniously in 2026. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? <clears throat> I know it's late. I know it's uh, difficult. But uh, the Secretary General and our Chair for Ligo have delivered. Let me have your question. I want to believe that you are just being a devil's advocate because even where you are, for you to be with us at this hour trying to listen and gather news from what we are saying is because you believe what is going on is nonsensical. The party president is Edgar Chagwarongo. President, I mean, our good brother, Mao Sampa, and uh, the legalities around what he pronounced on himself is a matter that will be exhausted in court. But I want to believe, as Secretary General, just like my colleagues, that the hints so far expressed have indicated that he acknowledged 
that he may have miscalculated at some point. But I think it is important to acknowledge that there's a leadership in place. Everybody will be guided. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have activities, some of which will involve members of parliament, some of which will involve the president. And we also believe that our brother, wherever he is in national duties, he will be able to contribute to this process. It's a process that will culminate into collective effort to resolve not only matters of patriotic front, but also resolve matters that will be able to help us defend the democracy that is under threat under the you know, project and orchestrations or schemes of Misaka and HLM. I noticed, Chair, you wanted to contribute. Yes, just just put the microphone to yourself, that one. Yeah, thank you. I was no, just, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I was just going to add that all these things you are seeing being orchestrated by the other side of the divide is because of the immense fear that is coming over them because PF is just about to realign its leadership. It's because people have realized mistakes were made, but it's also because the whole patriotic front has rallied behind the legitimate president of the party, Dr. Edgar Chagolungu, and because those whom it is concerning are trying by all means to ensure that they frustrate these efforts. That's why I've seen what is going on here. It is very easy to know who the president is. It is very easy to know where we're going in taking this direction forward. Yeah. Yes, Keith. Yes, my question goes to the Secretary General. Honorable, you mentioned earlier to say Honorable Mao Sanba, since he has realized of what assault he had caused to the party, the party is ready to dialogue with him. But as a Patriot Front, which is the largest party, according to the numbers in the National Assembly, and for our democratic tenets, calls for proper checks and balances, and to have a very strong opposition. As a party, what do you think has um, the party been in this array? Have you done justice to the democracy as an opposition uh, to, to our country? And also, how are, as a party are you going to navigate through these legal um, you know, matters that you have engulfed yourself in, in ensuring the party is intact and you go past through this thing? First of all, your comment towards the end is misplaced. We haven't engulfed ourselves in anything. There has just been an attempt by the UPND to try and destabilize the patriotic front. And that attempt, even when they are ex, you know, clearly exposed, they have no shame. Misaka and HLM are like they say in Bemba, Valisha Densoni. Muntu Chitana Gatamba Udin Na Udidi Buenye Tredegut to Yandauren Mir Gadirang Kambo at every juncture Uradi Sampura Mudu Awa Wasampuga Waga Sampuga Magana JJ Kamboti Bamuch to abduct three to a Gabo Namu High Court Bamuch to abduct in Bani Suno, which the sponsor Chavinga of our press briefing Bani Chavinga today has not only police at his house or at his press briefing, they have also directed Zesco to go and put a substation at his house so that he can have power throughout for security reasons when you are being rotated more than 20 hours. What, what kind of desperation is this? Like the chair said, is a desperation emanating from fear. We have not as PF engulfed ourselves in anything. For your own information, PF is intact. The same way of <coughs> seeing members of parliament remained united, resolute to stand and remain loyal to the leadership. It's the same thing that is happening across the country. It is that which is worrying Misaka and HLM. Oh, this, uh, uh, you know, Attempts and press briefings, calling themselves president and all that, is just a joke. That's why we're asking, how is the Chief Justice going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? How is Neri going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? How are the Zambian people going to sleep tonight with Chavinga's press briefing? Are we going to even have a comfortable sleep with our conscience clear that in our society, 
we should be able to tolerate and allow misfits of that nature exist and even grace the court when we all know before even they come that this is uncalled for. This treasonous act should never be tolerated by any patriotic Zambian, regardless of where you are. This is a rhythmic test against us politicians. This is a, a, an indictment against the, the judiciary. It's an indictment against the parliament. Parliament has already failed through that moil. Now it's up to the judiciary. Now it's up to the court of public opinion, the Zambian people, whether they can tolerate this kind of nonsense. And this, Chief, yeah. let me add something. That, that Robert Chavinga, for the second time, has kept on threatening the media, uh, threatening you that um, you'll be reported to the police. He caught, today he called himself a chief liquidator because he thinks he liquidated the post when he was just a chola boy for Lewis Marshall, who was the liquidator. Mm. Today he said he was going to liquidate the media, you members of the media, and that he would report you to the police. I'm so shocked that this is, I think, the second or third time he's issuing these threats. And media associations are very quiet. Law associations are very quiet. We should never tolerate threats against the media. You are the mirror of society. You are professionals. And like Honorable uh, Bonakachinda said, how have we allowed misfits like that issue threats to the media? Maybe you can issue threats to Emmanuel Mwamba or to Nakachinda. We are fellow politicians. Never to the media. And I hope that the police will move in and arrest that Chavinga. This is the second time he's issuing those very strong threats against the media. I just thought I could help you on that. May I just Chair. add uh, very briefly? Um, because I think the question is, is on how are we going to navigate these legal cases as a patriotic front. I think, like uh, SJ said, you are directing the question to the wrong party. That question must be directed to the courts. You must begin to ask questions. Are these courts prepared to give the patriotic front justice? Mm. Our responsibility as aggrieved citizens would be to take matters before the courts of law with the highest of expectations that we have got impeccable men of morality in the judiciary who see the cases for what they are and make decisions in that court. From the time of the 24th of October 2023, when Mao Sampa had that retreat, they are calling it convention, I still call it a retreat. Even a child at kindergarten knew that what happened there was wrong. But because constitutionally, <coughs> We have vested these powers to make those declarations in the courts. We decided to take these matters to court. The last cases that you've seen, there are actually three of them. Courts have vacillated on these matters. They've never brought themselves to deal with the merits of the case. The Even the when the Constitution demands of the courts to make sure that they address themselves to the merits of the case. Now, look, the moral right to adjudicate on matters rises and falls with the character of somebody who sits in court as a judge. With what we have gone through up to now, this is when you can hear an individual like Chavinga calling the judiciary video assistance referee. He calls him VAR. He says of Michael, of, 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 of Sampa, oh, you have expelled me. We are going to check with VAR. On matters of national leadership, mm. you reduce it to a tyrant of suggesting to the nation that to you, the court is a video assistant referee, and everybody agrees. Legal matters are resolved by the courts. The responsibility of the patriotic front, like any other party who would be aggrieved, would be to take these matters to court. But under what I called a very painful presumption that we're going to find objective, independent, and accountable judges who will look at the interest of the whole nation. These are public interest cases. These kinds of cases inform public policy on how you're going to handle the affairs of political leadership in the country. But if you're going to continue <clears throat> dancing around these cases and dealing only on what are called preliminary issues and throwing the cases out of court without guiding the parties, you will have a problem. 
So this question was directed to the SG, but I think the wrong party. The SG is doing what is right. He has two options. Either to summon members of the patriotic front to rise and re on a revolt and defend its leadership or defend its party by doing anything or by any means necessary, using Malcolm X's language, to ensure that you protect the party. Option number one. Option number two, to be respecters of the law and due process. On the understanding that we are being managed under a constitutional democracy and refer the matters to court and sit back under the expectation that those who draw money from the public purse, the judges, those who we gave the responsibility, because remember, judicial authority is vested in the people. We just surrendered that to the judges. And when it comes to constitutional matters, we surrendered it to that number of judges, which is not even more than 15. They are the ones who are supposed to be telling us what is constitutional and what is not. And they must strive to ensure that they don't bring about, you know, rule by the might, but rule by what is right. That's why I argued that I expect them to be accountable, to be independent, to be objective, and most importantly, to understand the importance of their duties. Judges, I have argued before, are not employees. They are not even civil servants. Judges are sovereign institutions. They discharge a sovereign function because under our constitutional democracy, sovereignty is distributed in three ways. The president is a sovereign. Me, even if I look very small in your eyes, because the people of Lukasha voted for me, they constituted me as a sovereign in parliament. Mm. And me, sitting with Brian Mondovide, Stephen Campiongo, Cornelius Simuitwa, Jack Mwimbu, and any other elected member of parliament in that house, we discharge a sovereign function called legislature. The judges are, in fact, the most important in the three connections because the judges check us they check the executive, they check us. In that way, we distribute sovereign power in three institutions. But you see, because in this country, under the UPND, we don't even know what sovereignty means. <clears throat> that is why this government can go and commit amounts of more than $280 billion to do a road from Lusaka to Ndola without bringing it to parliament. They can bring in somebody to come and invest in our mines in, in Mopani without bringing it to parliament, even when the constitution demands that they must bring it to the next sovereign who has a responsibility to check their conduct executive and recommend whether such a deal can go ahead or not. But because for them, they've suspended the constitution, they've suspended the rule of law, they've suspended democracy, and they're entrenching it very quickly with an oligarchy that comprises a ruling class which is supposed to be followed by everybody else. But like the SGR said, the Patriotic Front has options. Okay? We are here to stay. And our intention is to be part of the political process in the nation. And we're not doing it because we are permitted by the president to do it. No. We are doing it because the Constitution constitutes us as sovereigns. We are accountable to people who, have vo who voted for us, and we must be allowed to discharge that function without any interference from anybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we yeah, can I take you. The last one. Uh, I just wanted to um, get it on record if uh, there is uh, an official reconciliation with Mr. House and that what does the party make of uh, the pronouncement he's made uh, to uh, Parliament, rather in Parliament, uh, with uh, some changes that he announced, those changes um, which uh, uh, the MPC announced and appointed, uh, accepted those appointments. Uh, what is your take on that? For now, I think the focus that we have as a party is to deal with what is even more critical and important, the, the assault and destruction on our democracy through Misaka in, you know, by Misaka in the, through parliament and an attempt to get the judiciary to cooperate with him. As I speak with you, I'm fidgeting with the phone because some of the messages that we are giving here to try and assure our members, the members are calling and we're cutting the lines. Messages are flowing. Mr. SG, that's not the, the message we want to hear. We want a message of um, command because we are ready. I want to say to the Zambian people and everybody concerned, 
this is the last time we are going to be calling you to come down because we still have some degree of confidence in the judiciary. Beyond this, we will not be able to hold you. You will have to exercise your powers. Kenya has demonstrated and other jurisdictions have demonstrated that power lies with the people. We acknowledge that we have held you for many, many months, years now, from taking action outside the institutions that seem to be letting you down. As your leaders, we have kept the faith that these institutions will wake up to reality and be able to do the right thing. Beyond today, I don't think I will have the courage to come and call you to order and wait on those institutions. Sorry that we have to address you tonight to prevent you from taking the action you are proposing to take. But we think that it's necessary to give chance to everybody to do the right thing. Beyond this, as the Secretary General of Patriotic Front, unfortunately, I may not have the courage to be able to carry this same message. But for now, bear with us. The Chairman for LIGO is here. The Chairman for Information is here. Our dear MCC is here. We are pleading with you. We think that Zambia has always corrected itself. Zambia corrected itself in 1990. Zambia corrected itself in 2001. We think Zambia will correct itself today. We plead with you. There's no need to go the Kenyan way. There's no need to go any other way but to give chance to institutions of government to do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've come to close of the press conference, the emergency press conference by the Secretary General. Uh, tomorrow morning, I think we'll confirm with time, the members of parliament that are affected by the decisions that were taken today, accompanied by Chair Rigo, will be holding a press conference. I think we'll put out a notice. And uh, I think President Ed Galungu is also expected to speak maybe much later in the day. Again, we'll let you know. Um, uh, it's our duty now just to end the press conference and thank you, especially you, the media, that came at short notice. God bless you. God bless our country. And shalom, shalom. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.